So we've already created our first measure, right? A really simple sum of the quantity column, okay? Now the thing to bear in mind with Power BI um, is uh, in, in a sort of a big difference from a, you know, a sort of a background in Excel is that you you don't work with individual cells in Power BI. You work with columns, right? And you'll 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 see you know when we did that sum that we were asked to enter a column rather than a simple um, you know a simple you know cell which you would do in Excel. And that's and that's the one of the big things to sort of get your mind around with Power BI is that you know that simple um, concept, right? Of, and, and it sort of just changes the way you need to think about things um, from a from a formula perspective. Now let's just run through a, a few other really quick things that you could you could do around formulas here. Now some core calculations, okay? And I won't create all of these measures. I'm, I'm just going to use it as an example to sort of show you you know how many things you actually have at your disposal very quickly, okay? So I'm just going to create a new measure. And remember, I was clicked on this key measures group before I created the measure. And that's key because, you know, that's where this measure is going to land once we create it ultimately. Okay, so you have a simple things like average quantity. Um, average quantity is another is another simple, you know, average using averages is really another really simple way to create some of these easy to, um, easy to load formulas, right? So we've got average returns the average of all the numbers in the column, right? So you would go average. And, and one thing that's really good is that IntelliSense is superb in Power BI. The um, descriptions are also really good around what the formulas do. So I would always read these if you're just starting out and you're trying to get a, get a handle on, on what's possible. You can also, if you know, if you're if you really sort of don't even know where to start with what formulas or which functions to use, um, Enterprise DNA has a DAX formula reference guide that you can find you know, very easily on our website. You know, just go to the resources section and you can um, download all of the different formulas you can use. So that's going to give you a head start there as well. Now you see here, um, I can actually input the the function and then it gives me even um, you know it gives me the details again in terms of what parameters need to go inside it so I could you know put the quantity column in there as well hopefully you're starting to notice this, this we're pretty limited in what we can do mainly because of the data that we have right we can't do too much more because we've only sort of got like pricing and quantity data and I'll cover that in just a second okay now we also have min you can go min you can go max etc um, you'll see there's some other variations down here, but um, we'll get we'll cover those a little bit more, and those will be covered a lot more in sort of the da the sort of um, the DAX courses within um, Enterprise DNA, DNA Online, the the free and um, sort of paid ones. We go into those in a lot more detail, but you know this is just me getting you familiar with some simple measures, right? You know, min max we can do as well. Now, if we can somehow create um, a way to bring in or create or, or create sort of like revenue information. We have a lot more things you know, available to us, right? We can create um, revenue calculations, cost calculations, and then maybe even sort of profit calculations, right? And so this is this is where we need to get these sort of core measures down and in and, and our model so that we can then utilize those in further analysis. What I want to do is I just want to show you, um, I'll just actually create this one so we can say so average quantity. So I'll just create that measure quickly, average quantity. But I'll just show you what we can do inside of here. And this is where sort of having a good understanding of, of why we use measures instead of calculated columns is, is, is really fundamental. Okay. So what we could ultimately do here, right, is we could create a new column in this table to get a revenue number, right? Because we have the quantity and we have the price, we could ultimately go like this new column and go, okay. Um, uh, let's go revenues, call this revenues, all right? And I could go quantity, quantity times, and here we, I just need to reference the particular column because we're, um, we're, we're actually physically inputting this data within this table itself. So sales quantity times the price, right? And I could go enter. Okay, so this is basically giving me now my revenues number that I could then say go and sum up or I can go on average, etc. But what I want to show you is that you 
don't need to create these and I honestly would not create these I want you to really um, get the handle of why measures are a better way to calculate this okay so what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete this column because I don't I literally don't want you to fall back to your Excel days and think that you need to go and create every single calculation as a calculated column. You can do so much within virtual calculations like measures if you just know which formula to, to select, which formula to choose, okay? And here is when I wanna introduce you to a subset of functions, of measures, sorry, that are called iterating functions, okay? So I'll just um, get up a new measure here, and I'm gonna call this one total sales, okay? Now, I'm also here going to go down to a new line in my formula, okay? And I can do that. There's a lot you can do within this formula, but by the way, um, I'm going to go shift enter, okay? And then I'm going to go sum, and then I'm going to, sh um, instead of choosing sum, I'm going to choose sum x, okay? Now let's have a quick look at what it says to, to do within sum x, okay? Sum x, and, and this is the same with all of the formulas that have an x on the end, they are what are called iterating functions. What they do is you can run logic at every single row in a table which you specify, okay? So basically what it's doing is it's bringing what you would ordinarily do in a calculated column into a measure, okay? And it says returns the sum of an expression evaluated for each row in a table, okay? So we're gonna input a table, then we're gonna input an expression which can be sort of like any logic you could dream of and then it's going to evaluate it at every single row then sum it all up at the end okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to put sales because i want to go and recreate that calculated column we just did basically in this measure and then i'm going to for every single row in my sales table i'm going to go quantity times by the price okay and then i'm going to go enter and so you see here that it's not just sort of like one column i'm representing here it's actually some logic at every single row and so what's going to happen when I push enter, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy and paste uh, this uh, visualization, and I'm going to bring in, I'm going to swap the quantity sold for total sales. And so now what I'm seeing at every sing for every single customer here is I'm seeing now the total sales, the sort of revenues. And what's happening is that I'm going um, for every single filter that is put in place, we are being filtered for, by each different customer. Each different customer is being filtered in our model, right? The customer is being filtered here, slowing down to here, so that we're only looking at every single sale for that specific customer. We are then going to iterate through every single row in the sales table that remains after those filters are in place. And at every single row, we're going to go quantity times the price at the first row. Then we're going to do the second row and go quantity times the price, then quantity times the price, and so on and so forth until we get through all of the um, sales that had gone to that particular customer. Then we're going to sum it all up. We're going to sum up all of those results that were saved into memory at every single row, and that's how we're getting these ultimate results here um, in our visualization. One thing I would also really recommend when you're starting out with measures is to turn your results into a table. It's, I find it's just so much easier to try to actually see the number than trying to sort of look deeply into a visualization and understand, okay, what is the formula doing? If you can see each individual result, it makes it a little bit easier to, to um, understand you know, maybe what is actually happening within a formula. Okay, so that's you know that's a really quick overview of iterating functions. You know, there's 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 quite a bit. You know, I I I, I sort of haven't had the chance to dive into because you know this is a beginner guide course. I don't want to overload you with too much, but this sort of subset of functions is key to really understand. Okay, so I'm giving you exposure to it so that you can then you know start try and start using it and sort of understanding it a bit more deeper. There's a whole subset of these iterating functions. You know, like sum x, there's average x, there's min x, there's there's um, max x is count x okay it's a whole raft of different things now the last formula i want to show you because just to show you how quickly we can create these things i'm going to create another um, measure here which um, i'm going to call total transactions okay and i'm going to use another function that i really like um, 
say we want to just sort of count up how many rows um, are in a, in a specific table, how many rows remain after the fields have, have been put in place. So what you can do is you can use a function called count rows, right? There's an actual function called count rows, and what it does is it counts the number of rows in the table, okay? And so what I can do is I can sort of just reference my sales table, push enter, and I'll drag that into my table here so we can compare. And now we're seeing how many sales a customer has made, how many transactions they have made, because the filtering again is being done and then count rows is only counting up the amount of sales um, rows that are left after that filter has been put in place. And we're also over here doing quantity sold. And what I can do is I can bring them all into the same table here so we can compare them side by side. Okay, so those are just sort of, they, I've highlighted here, you know, um, you know, a few different variations around simple things you can do uh, that can quickly get you some insights, right? And they're the things to always start on when you are working within um, Power BI and trying to get some sort of analysis. You want to start with these simple things. Having a good understanding of um, iterating functions is also very, very key. Um, you know, so I've given you exposure to that now as well. And you know that's a, that's an important concept that can be taken to a far more advanced level as well. But it all starts here. It'll get your understanding right here, and then the move to more advanced calcs is is not as difficult as you might as you as you may think right now. Okay. Right. Okay. We're going to round off this this um, your introduction introduction to measures right, and we're going to move into what I what I call measure branching a measure branching methodology. Um, and then you're going to see a few more calculations that get, get and get exposure to a few more um, great calculations that you could probably you could start using pretty quickly as well. Okay, so let's move on to that.